Tekken is complex enough when just confined to two dimensions, as it's difficult to know when to attack, if you should block high or low, or just get out of the way. Then if you throw in the third dimension, things start getting very confusing very fast. If you've played 2D Fighters, it's very easy to just forget that you can step into the background or foreground, and by not doing so, you're putting yourself at such a tremendous disadvantage. Tekken is balanced by its Z-axis interactions. There is a good reason why attacks with homing properties exist, and that's because without them, you would never be able to pin down those players that step all over you. This maneuverability is very powerful, albeit quite difficult to implement for newer players. So let's figure out how we can live in the third dimension. I wonder, am I OP here as well? There are two main ways to move along the Z axis, with the first being a sidestep and the second a side walk. Countering this, there are attacks with varying degrees of tracking. The amount an attack tracks or the tracking of an attack is a term of how well the move is able to clip your character during the Z-axis movement. A linear move, as you'd imagine, interacts mainly, if not completely, at a two-dimensional level. Attacks come in varying levels of tracking, where lesser tracking attacks leave a wider window for you to evade them, as well as allowing a larger quantity of characters to be able to get out of the way. The greater a move tracks, the more strict you have to be with your sidestep, until it gets to a point where sidestepping becomes nullified and you'll have to attempt to incorporate side walking. Then homing moves, which universally seem to have around 180 degrees of tracking, will lock down side walking options. Most attacks are better at tracking to a particular side. And you'll often find that characters have weaker sides, such as the infamous advice given to everyone struggling against Mishimas, just sidestep left. When you tap up or down, you can perform a sidestep. This allows you to dodge quick linear moves or moves with poor tracking to a particular side. This means it's usually implemented for specific situations or as a hard read. Sidestepping only puts your character half a meter away from where you started and every time a player performs a new action, they have the ability to realign themselves, meaning you're right back in their sights. Sidestepping initiates an invasive stance which varies in effectiveness to each character. The primary benefit of the sidestep is the ability to remain unpredictable, quickly displacing your character whilst maintaining a tremendous amount of options to follow up with. It also makes sense to step when you're near the opponent as your character moves in reference to that opponent. The closer you are, the more you travel around your opponent, meaning the larger the dodge radius. You'll often see good players sidestepping after a jab or another small frame deficit or even a surplus. This is due to the fact that at these frames, Decent players respect each other enough to keep retaliations limited to faster attacks, often which happen to be extremely linear. The opponent should adapt by utilising a move which may be slower yet has superior tracking or delay their response to properly align themselves. Although doing so will give up those valuable frames that they may have acquired, meaning if the player who they thought was going to step actually retaliates with an attack, this will shut down this option. This is where player skill and conditioning emerge. Side walking can be seen as an extension to your sidestep, where if attempting to perform it from a standing state, will retain all the benefits of a sidestep. The main differences are when you've actually completely transitioned into your side walk. Sidestepping incorporates greater pulses of acceleration, while side walking utilizes more constant velocity. Even though now you are travelling at a diminished velocity, you still gain more distance than you would during the period of two sidesteps. Which is why you can sidewalk slow yet while tracking moves. 
This is also the core reason why you can't just hold your sidewalk against fast moves. You simply don't have that burst of speed you get from sidestepping to dodge those moves. One of the most impactful ways you can incorporate sidewalking into your gameplay is to utilize it during your opponent's string. Due to the ability to continue your walk during an opponent's slower attack, you'll often end up at their side or even their back, leaving them susceptible to huge juggle combos. Although if an attack recovers fast, the opponent can quickly start a separate attack which isn't part of the same string to realign themselves and catch the sidewalk. Meaning if you are going to sidewalk, you should stop after you have evaded the first attack or the partial string and immediately punish. Sidewalking also becomes a much more desirable option at mid-range and further since the degree of which you travel is much more impactful than a sidestep. Being at mid-range also means your opponent has to use moves which have more range, therefore are generally slower, allowing you sufficient time to initiate a sidewalk. A great way to showcase the application of sidewalking is sidewalking a while running move. Since these attacks are normally incredibly linear, have enormous range and lesser skilled players will approach constantly with them, if you say see a Lee running at you, you can anticipate the while running 3-4 and begin your sidewalk to punish. Here's a quick recap before getting into some more advanced applications. Sidestepping has more acceleration and generally more immediate evasiveness, allowing you to get out of the way from attacks quicker. Sidestep also moves a set distance every time and less cancelled, which proves more useful the closer you are to your opponent. Sidestep recovers very quickly, meaning you have the ability to punish as fast as you, the player, can humanly react. Sidewalking is generally slower to get going, yet makes up for this in its ability to travel further faster. Due to the greater distance travelled, sidewalking can evade moves with greater tracking, so long as you had the foresight to initialise the walk. When the opponent is not realigning, Sidewalking will allow you to continue your movement around the opponent, producing better punishment opportunities. Now some nice things you should know about sidestepping is that you can hold back or down back during your sidestep to cancel into a block. This greatly increases your defensive strength, as if you predicted incorrectly or you are trying for an option select and your opponent is using a slower move, you are able to block and respond appropriately. You'll find that slower homing moves may not actually catch your sidestep at all, especially if you initiated it before your opponent's attack. Alongside blocking, you can also cancel the step with a backdash, allowing you to escape similar situations, except backdashing grants you a more breathing room and the possibility of a whiff punish. This is quite difficult to implement for newer players though, as backdashing very quickly during your sidestep will diminish your lateral movement, meaning you may not produce a large enough gap to evade even the most linear attacks. Finally, you do have the ability to duck during your sidestep by inputting back and then down back or going straight into a crouching block. Therefore allowing you to not only dodge linear blows, but also crush slower and better tracking high attacks. You'll often see great players sidestep and then duck certain strings or high homing moves making their opponent completely reevaluate their approach or suffer the consequences. We should also talk about the fact that not every character is created equally. The main variable which separates the strength of a character's lateral movement seems to be their hurtbox as well as the ability for them to contort themselves during the start of their sidestep. This is where the complexity and beauty of Tekken shines as the interactions are near endless between the varying tracking types of each attack and the side movement properties of each character. Sometimes you'll find that your character can evade certain attacks while other characters can't. Normally, if a string seems pretty broken at a glance, there is usually an opportunity to evade it laterally. If it seems like there is no catch-all option, that's because there is none. Side-stepping and side-walking are just incredibly useful tools which open up more pathways for you to interact with your opponents. 
This will create way more valuable opportunities, allowing you to continually challenge your opponent's game plan. 